So what we've seen today is really what I'm starting to call the industrialization of hacking. And this is really interesting. So our, our marketing uh, guys asked uh, one of the um, people who works for Oliver to do an analysis of trends in hacking. And he came back with this chart that we thought was fascinating because it's so uh, interesting how we have these, these trends in hacking. Hacking is like anything. Things become popular, things go out of favor. So one type of attack is very popular, especially when it's very effective in its early days. Uh, and over time, defenses are arrayed against it. It becomes harder to use. The, the bar goes up. And then they, they move on to the next thing. So what we see here, interestingly, from uh, 1985 to 95, we saw viruses transported you know, on sneaker net by floppy disk and things like that. We didn't have USB tokens. We didn't have really the internet back then. So viruses moved around by disk back then. And for 10 years, this was kind of your primary headache that you'd have to worry about in the computing world that we deal with day to day. Um, once they started to get covered, we have early versions of McAfee and we had Norton antivirus and things like that, we ended up with, uh, with macroviruses. These were attacks against the macro infrastructure that uh, Microsoft Office uses. Uh, back in my early days, I used to write them, but I used to write them for the government, so it was fun uh, and legal. Um, once macroviruses started to get covered, people just simply started turning them off, which is a very effective defense against them. We saw the advent of worms, and when worms came out, we started to see some really interesting stuff happen. We had these broad-based attacks uh, that happened against the entire internet infrastructure uh, that were very rapid and, and did damage, and you know, quote unquote damage. They would knock things offline, maybe uh, make the um, infrastructure that was out there not work so great for a little while, and then it, they'd go away. And we saw technologies created to deal with them. That's where intrusion prevention systems came from, which is SourceFire's core technology. Uh, after that, five years later, we saw spyware and rootkits, uh, which we still see out there, but there are some fairly advanced defenses against them these days. And then recently, just in the last few years, and this really uh, was very splashy because in 2010, right at the beginning of the year, we had Google get hit by uh, this new phrase, this new thing that everybody talks about, the advanced persistent threat. And what is that? Well, that's guys who break into your environment and then they embed themselves. You know, they put in persistent embedded malware. This, instead of saying the advanced persistent threat, which I think is a term that's very uh, nebulous and overused, I like to say prevent, uh, persistent embedded malware. They establish a beachhead in your environment, and their intent is to stick around. And when you get infected with these guys, you don't get infected by one piece of malware. You get infected by 10 pieces of malware. When you get hit by malware, it invites its friends over to play. And that's how it works today.